Yes. All right. And there, so that's our next, uh, our next speaker is Matteo Raffaelli from, uh, from Vienna. And uh, he's going to tell us about non-rigidity of flat ribbons. Thanks, Matteo. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for, to all the organizers for organizing such a nice uh, event. So I will, um, the topic uh, of my talk uh, is uh, <clears throat> the geometry of uh, flat surfaces in R3. So um, in other words, developable surfaces. So in particular, I will, uh, the, um, it deals with the problem of constructing a flat surfaces containing a given curve. Let me just recall the definition. Uh, so a surface uh, in R3 is flat if it is locally isometric to the plane. And uh, so you can, stretch, you can uh, flatten it on a plane without any stretching or compressing. And if it does not contain any planar open set, that, what, uh, that is what uh, local non-planarity means here. So uh, <clears throat> these, uh, these surfaces are characterized by having zero Gaussian curvature or equivalently by being ruled surfaces uh, with tangent plane constant along the rulings. I mean, this is, a, this is a, a really a classical family. It has been studied a lot. And in fact, the, the classification theorem dates back to the 18th century. 18th century. So they're really, uh, really a classical family of surfaces. Uh, on, in addition, being, having this property of being locally isometric to the plane, they, they are very interesting for applications particularly in manufacturing, because uh, it's very, they are very simple to produce. You just need to bend uh, uh, planar sheets of material. So for this uh, reason, they are used a lot in manufacturing, or also in architecture. So uh, one can observe uh, examples in uh, the work of Calatrava or Frank Gehry. Here is a, a quite famous uh, uh, structure. Uh, by Gary. Uh, here is another one, perhaps a bit less famous. Uh, this one is in Spain. So in applications, uh, one often wants to, to construct a developable, starting from, a developable surface starting from a curve. So you, you, you have a curve in space and you want to uh, somehow extend uh, this curve uh, to, to a developable. So uh, it is uh, then natural to, to, to aim for, for a description of the set of all uh, flat uh, ribbons containing a given curve. And all flat ribbons having a fixed width, uh, having a, a fixed width in the transversal direction, possibly also with a method for their construction. So to be mm, a bit more precise about uh, uh, what do I mean by uh, flat ribbon along a curve with a, fi with a fixed width, I will just uh, I will need a definition. So uh, given gamma uh, a smooth and regular curve, so a flat surface S containing gamma, uh, I call it a flat ribbon along gamma if these two conditions uh, are met. So gamma should be transversal to every ruling of, uh, of S and should meet each of them at the midpoint. And the second condition, uh, the second condition is that uh, S should have constant width. So what do I mean by width? I mean, the, um, by definition, I mean, I define width as the length uh, of the projection of uh, the ruling onto the, the um, normal plane of the curve. So condition two simply means that uh, this length does not depend on T. So it's just constant uh, uh, along the curve. So it turns out that the key ingredient for, for uh, um, describing the set uh, of flat ribbons along the curve is given by uh, this ruling angle. So this angle between, uh, which is the, depicted here in the, in the sketch, uh, is the angle that the, the, ruling, uh, the ruling makes with the tangent vector of the curve. So it is a function uh, that for, for, the, for a flat ribbon is in its range, it takes, it takes, value, takes values in a zero pi. And so, uh, and this is, as we will see, this uh, is a very important notion for, uh, for the description of, uh, of, the, of all flat ribbons along a curve. So the, um, to present the new result, I will need a couple of more uh, introductory slides. So the first one is to define uh, this notion of Darboux frame. So we let uh, T be the tangent vector of the curve. So I'm assuming uh, that the curve is uh, unit speed parameterized. 
then given an, a unit normal vector field n along gamma, so normal means that it's always in the normal plane of the curve, I define the Darboux frame of gamma with respect to n to be the triple of vectors T H n, where H is just the cross product of the first, of the first two. And then uh, we define the geodesic curvature, the normal curvature and geodesic torsion of gamma, and I should always say with respect to n, by means of these uh, uh, dot products. So the, um, by this is an orthonormal frame along the curve, and by orthonormality follows that uh, this matrix equation uh, holds. Uh, then the classical existence result. So uh, this is a result that I attributed to Docarmo. Uh, I mean, it can be easily, quite straightforwardly obtained from, by, from using a result that uh, it is present in Docarmo's, Docarmo's textbook uh, on curves and surfaces. So suppose that the normal curvature of gamma with respect to n is always different from zero, then, uh, then there exists a ribbon, a flat ribbon, which is normal to n along gamma. Moreover, uh, this ribbon is locally unique. So it's, uh, if you fix the width, you only have uh, one solution. And uh, it is parameterized uh, by this map sigma, which is defined by, uh, by means of this uh, Darbu frame. So you have h and t here. And then uh, you have this uh, ratio mu minus uh, geodesic torsion divided by normal curvature. So it follows from this description that the ruling angle, so the angle between the rulings and the, between each ruling and the tangent vector of the curve is uh, exactly given by the arco cotangent of uh, mu. So uh, it is important to note that the condition on the normal curvature, this, so this condition on the normal curvature is always different from zero, is sufficient for the existence of this ribbon as uh, this theorem states, but it's not necessary. So uh, this is the very reason why I can give you, uh, I, I can present you this uh, new result. So uh, I need, uh, I just need uh, to, to introduce some notation, so I will, uh, refer to a ribbon by using its normal vector along, along gamma. So uh, R of n simply refers to the, the flat ribbon uh, determined by a normal vector n along gamma. And then I will call alpha of n uh, the ruling angle of uh, R of n. So here's the theorem. So the theorem is valid under the assumption that the curve is uh, locally non-planar meaning that uh, does not contain any uh, planar open, uh, open set. So uh, its restriction to any open interval is non-planar. So what the theorem says is that uh, if you choose a smooth function phi with a, a range in zero pi, uh, then, uh, then, uh, for, for, um, then for any normal vector along the curve, so if you choose a normal vector uh, uh, at some point of the curve, uh, for instance, this purple vector in the picture, then uh, you, there exists a, um, a flat ribbon along the curve having ruling angle equal to phi, to the given phi, and such that uh, its normal vector at this point is exactly the, the purple vector, the chosen vector. So this, uh, uh, well, this theorem, uh, this result uh, follows from the theory of uh, ordinary differential equations. And so you can, uh, by solving an OD, you can actually construct the solution. So in most cases, you would solve this OD numerically. In some cases, uh, there are also uh, explicit solutions. So the, um, uh, really the, um, the consequence of this result is that uh, once you have, uh, if you have a flat ribbon along, along gamma, then you can deform this, uh, this uh, surface in such a way that uh, the curve, uh, the width, and the ruling angle all remain unchanged. So here we see, uh, for example, four different ribbons. They all have this, uh, the same width, the same ruling angle. They are all uh, along the same curve. They only differ in terms of uh, the normal vector. They only differ in terms of the initial condition, uh, which is given by this uh, a normal vector at, at, uh, at a point, and in this case is the normal vector, the initial normal vector is prescribed at the point uh, where you see this cut uh, in these three, three images. So uh, summing up, this, uh, for, for any given uh, ruling angle, you, you have a sort of a circle, you have a circle of uh, flat ribbons having uh, along, along a given curve with that ruling angle. So you have a whole palm, you have a, uh, you have a whole family of, uh, of ribbons. 
So in this, uh, in this context, it is uh, sort of natural, uh, once we have established this result, to uh, try to study the set of all flat ribbons along gamma in terms of energy, so in terms of bending energy. And uh, this discussion, uh, the starting point of this discussion is this result, uh, which was claimed by Sadovsky in 1930 and then proved uh, by Wunderlich uh, many years later. So uh, this result tells us that the bending energy uh, defined as the squared of the integral of the squared uh, mean curvature uh, of the rectifying developable of gamma in the limit of uh, infinitely small, uh, small width is proportional to this uh, integral. In fact, is equal to uh, half the width times uh, this integral. So the rectifying developable uh, is uh, just the envelope of the rectifying planes uh, of gamma. And uh, um, in other words, uh, it, it is just the flat ribbon along gamma determined by uh, the, the principal normal of the curve. So it just uh, is the, the flat ribbon corresponding to n equal uh, of the equal the principal normal. So I'm assuming here that the curvature is always uh, non, non zero. Uh, so uh, clearly, this result, uh, I mean, this result tells us the, the energy for a, for a single ribbon, for a single flat ribbon, but as we saw, there are many anymore, so we need to extend this result in order to apply it somehow. And it turns out that the extension is very nice. I mean, uh, we, we just need to change, uh, we just need to es essentially switch, uh, uh, replace the, the normal curvature in, uh, instead of in, in the place of the, the curvature and then the geodesic torsion in place of uh, torsion. So uh, then again, we have uh, the, the bending energy is really equal to this integral times uh, the width divided by two in the limit of uh, infinitely small uh, width. And uh, the, from this result, uh, one observes uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, as a corollary, we obtain that uh, for any fixed ruling angle, if you fix the ruling angle, then the ribbon in which gamma, the, in which the curve has the least energy, costs the most energy and vice versa. This is just follows from the fact that uh, uh, the, the normal curvature square plus the geodesic curvature square, they must be equal to, must uh, adapt to uh, the, the curvature square. So um, uh, this is the, the really just the, this observation allows one to conclude this corollary. And the, um, in particular, one could uh, observe that uh, if you now consider uh, the ruling angle of the rectifying developable, and then uh, you, yeah, then, then this theorem, this uh, result um, shows that the rectifying developable itself uh, maximizes the bending energy among uh, all flat ribbons uh, having the same ruling angle, all flat ribbons along the same curve, having the same ruling angle. Like we saw before that there is, uh, a circle uh, of such flat ribbons. So uh, if instead one wants to consider also the possibility of changing the ruling angle, I mean, if one wants to study the energy uh, on the whole set of flat ribbons, then uh, the situation is a bit more complicated, of course. Uh, first of all, one observes that the energy has no upper bound. So uh, that is because one can construct um, flat ribbons along a curve with an arbitrarily small normal curvature. And uh, in the limit of the normal curvature going to zero, the integrand goes to infinity. So uh, there, is no, uh, there is no upper bound. However, uh, if the curve is non-planar, there, uh, there exists a positive lower bound. So uh, this opens up a, a problem, which I believe is very natural and interesting because uh, the problem uh, namely is uh, given a non-planar curve, uh, what is the flat ribbon along gamma uh, having the minimum bending energy? Uh, so the, um, another, this is equivalent to finding, uh, to study this theta functional, to finding the minimum of this uh, theta functional, where now theta is just a rotation uh, of the Darbu frame uh, of gamma with respect to n, so it's just a rotation in the normal plane of gamma. And, uh, uh, Okay, time is almost up, so I should uh, area with the last slide, but uh, this is somehow a problem which I believe uh, is uh, worth studying. And uh, so as a, just to conclude, I will just give an example. So uh, one can consider, for, for instance, uh, a very simple example, a, a, an helix as a curve 
and then you take the ruling angle uh, equal to a constant, phi half. So in this case, uh, we are considering uh, flat ribbons uh, along this helix uh, having uh, um, orthogonal rulings. So um, in the case, uh, if you start with a, with a flat ribbon uh, having orthogonal rulings, then uh, any other flat ribbon with the same, of, with the same ruling angle uh, just differs by a rotation, a constant rotation. So it's obtained just by rotating the normal vector by, by a constant angle throughout the whole curve. So, uh, and this, uh, this means that we can, we just have uh, one parameter to, to really describe the energy. Uh, so the energy we, we can, in, in some sense, um, we can just um, evaluate the dependence of the energy on the initial condition on this Q uh, value of the rotation um, about the, the, the rotation of, uh, of the, um, the normal. We can evaluate the, the dependence on the initial condition just by looking at this ratio where now R is a parameter that describes how uh, slender is this helix essentially. And uh, if you plot uh, this ratio for different values of R, you obtain uh, the, this pattern. So as you can see, at least uh, up to from R going to one to three, you see uh, a, a decrease in the influence of the initial condition on the, uh, this ratio. Then it does not, it's not true anymore for from R going from three to four, but in general, it is, the, it is like this, the, as the ratio, as, sorry, as the, the parameter R increases, this ratio uh, becomes uh, more and more uh, flat. So in, 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 uh, in fact, in the limit of R uh, going to infinity, uh, this uh, ratio becomes one. So this is somehow to be expected because uh, as, uh, as the helix becomes more and more slender, you, you, you should expect that there is less dependence on the initial condition for, for the, on the energy. So this, uh, this concludes uh, what I wanted to tell you. So I think, uh, I think I'm done. And so if you, if you have questions, please uh, ask. All right, thank you. Um, there's somebody had a quick question in the chat. Jack, did you wanna? Yeah. I'm sure I can. Uh, I mean, the um, I loved it. I mean, this this was a lot of fun. Uh, I sometimes use uh, origami to teach mathematics, and so these sort of uh, developable things are are a lot of fun to look at. Um, I was wondering, from your initial initial motivation for manufacturing, uh, what does your family of of ribbons look like if you actually develop it onto the plane? Uh, in particular, you'd like to find one that doesn't intersect itself so that you could actually just develop it, cut it out, and then curl it mm -hmm. up into the curve? Yes. Um, well, I would say that, uh, I mean, if you consider the developments of, uh, if you just start with a curve and then consider the family of uh, uh, a family of um, ribbons uh, along this curve, then uh, um, for a fixed ruling angle, then uh, the, the developments change. Uh, I mean, the, the geodesic curvature changes. Uh, that's the thing. If you if you consider uh, if you consider a fixed ruling angle, but you let the, the initial condition shown change, then for any uh, solution of this uh, initial value problem, you have uh, uh, you have a geodesic curvature. Uh, the curve lies in a different uh, surface, so you should consider the geodesic curvature of this on, on the, of the same curve, but different because it lies in a different surface. So the geodesic curvature changes. So the developments, in, 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 as a consequence, changes as well. And uh, uh, but in general, I, I would if you start with a nicely nicely shaped curve. Uh, I don't know how to make it rigorous, but I wouldn't expect the, the, um, the um, I wouldn't expect the problem of self intersections. Uh, of course, this depends on, on the on the fact that you you if you extend if your ribbon is uh, sufficiently uh, it has a big uh, width, then of course you may end up in in uh, singularities. 
Uh, of course, I, I want to use this to, you know, make make curves on a polyhedra and then uh -huh. hopefully make a ribbon to unfold the polyhedron. But uh, so my, my ribbons are, are not usually going to be very nice. But uh, yeah, I yeah. see. I see. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Of course, I mean that's a that's a, a problem that one uh, one could expect, as as you as you as you asked. Yes, indeed. Yes. So I'm sorry, I cannot I cannot answer your question. Definitely, I mean I don't know how how, how one could uh, try to, to 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 remove this problem or at least uh, uh, some, somehow ease the problem. Yes. Right. Um, maybe uh, Stephen. I think Max was before me. Was Max before you? So, well, we'll get to both of you, uh, and then and then we're gonna we're gonna. You go first. Next. Go ahead. <laughs> so very very nice, Matthew. Uh, extremely interesting. So Thanks. a couple of things. I, I was trying to understand this ordinary differential equation argument, and what was puzzling me is that. It looked like it was an initial value problem where you were propagating the angle along the curve. Mm -hmm. and, and what I was trying to understand is that, of course, once you wrap around the entire curve, I was worried about the periodicity and whether or not you actually have a closed, uh, smooth join as the, as the angle winds its way around. So... Uh, you mean uh, whether I should expect for a closed curve to have closed solutions? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, a you need basically a periodic solution to your ordinary differential equation. So, you know, you set your initial condition, you propagate along, but eventually you come back. You yes. have to have. So I was sort of anticipating that, don't you genetically have a misalignment? Yes, yes, I do have a misalignment. If you, if you, if you allow me to, now we go back to the, yes, as you can see from this picture, uh -huh. uh, the, here, you cannot, you cannot see the, the cursor of my mouse, right? Just, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if uh, the, the initial condition here is given uh, at this point where there is this cut, yeah, and uh, uh, so I'm just uh, um, I'm just prescribing the normal vector here, uh, and uh, the um, so when you when you come when you you, you then solve the initial value problem, and uh, uh, when you go back to the same point, you you are not coming back in the same uh, situation. So this yes, is so really this is really an OD uh, situation. It's really an, an initial value problem. So uh, the, the fact that this is closed is uh, just because uh, I have um, this is a curve on the torus, and uh, I'm just computing the the flat ribbon that is uh, tangent to the torus uh, along this curve. Yeah. So this is closed by by. So, like I guess I was interested in the rigidity question. So in some sense, if I if I gave you an arbitrary closed curve, yes. Uh, what do you think about the moduli space of developable surfaces then? Is it non-existence or if, it, if there is one, it's just one? No, sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, please, one, can you... So again, I was thinking that given a closed curve... Yes, yes. Uh, the existence of a developable surface smoothly existing on and holding that curve, that, that, that existence question is still a bit unclear to me. Uh... Well, if you start with a closed curve and and your closed curve is uh, is um, well, um, so just yeah, following you, that argument of propagating, you know. Yeah, but you, but you want it closed, right? The, your your developable. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, that's a nice question. Yes, and uh, so I, tell you, I tell you the motivation for asking. The motivation is yes. that if I give you a, if I gave you a Mobius strip, yes. With, with um, for example, that elastic energy. It's a very interesting question to study the minimum energy state. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, but, but, they, but they're the question, you, you have to allow yourself to deform the curve. So the degree yeah. of freedom is the curve itself. The curve, the center line curve is part of the, uh, the mobility. That's yeah. the part of the degree of freedom. So anyway, that's, that was my thought. I'll, yeah, yeah nice no, thought. it's an interesting thought. I, I had in the past the same thought, uh, in, in more or less a similar thought. And now that I think about it, I think that uh, for if you if you have a non-planar curve, uh, I think there is a result saying that you can construct uh, a flat Mobius strip uh, well, yeah. along this curve. Actually, mm -hmm. in any homotopy class, you can you can yeah, find that's right. it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, but of course, how to how, how do you construct it in practice is probably non non so so simple. I mean, maybe 
but but I think uh, no, I think you can construct it actually. But uh, of course, one may ask whether you you that what is the what, what is in some sense the, the most natural uh, instance of this uh, structure. So of course, it makes sense to try to minimize the energy, or I don't know, maybe choose uh, some nice ruling angle so that you have. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's an interesting question. Yes. Thanks, so thanks, Matteo. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Max. Thanks. Just perhaps a quick remark to, to Stephen. There, there is a paper by Starostin and van der Heiden, I'm sure you're aware of this, um, that discusses the minimal shape of the Möbius strip precisely. Huh? So that came yes. out like, yeah, okay, I'm sure you're aware of this. Anyway, so um, thank you, Matteo, for this for this very nice talk. I was, of course, I, the question is too obvious, but I still need to ask it. Did, did you think of a discrete version of this? So we know that for um, polygonal curves, we can define easily Darboux frames. Frenier frames are not as nice, just as they are not for, for smooth curves, right? Because they might not exist, Yes. Um, even for smooth curves. But natural or natural frames or Bishop frames always exist for po polygonal curves. So it's kind of natural to carry over the construction to polygonal curves. H have you? done that also for experimentation and yeah, yeah. yes yeah I, I started thinking about that and uh, uh, I I, um, I try to to sort of replicate this behavior in the in the case of uh, just uh, a discrete curve so it, it turns out that uh, um, I mean the, the um, uh, this pattern of course you, you can extend it to 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 the discrete setting so you can construct uh, uh, you can construct um, this family of uh, of, uh, of uh, developables uh, just by solving an equation, which is then not, not anymore an OD, but it's just uh, an algebraic equation. So uh, the, the only um, perhaps, um, I mean, the, all, everything boils down to, to constructing a frame as you, as you already suggested. So you, if you start with a, with a curve, uh, so it's just a discrete uh, set of points, then you need to somehow, uh, you need to, to, you can take, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the, the discrete, the forward difference for, for the discrete tangent vector, but then you need the vector which is orthogonal to, to, this, uh, to this tangent vector. And that's it, uh, essentially. Once you have this, then you can construct uh, a developable, and then you can also change the, the initial condition and construct another one. But this this mm, uh, this question is of course interesting. Also, if you start with uh, I don't know a mesh, and then uh, and then you have a curve on this mesh, and then you want to somehow try to to approximate this mesh uh, using uh, trying to to construct a strip that somehow follows uh, this curve in a nice way. And so yeah, I just started to look at it uh, more closely. But that's def definitely an interesting point of view. Yes, an interesting. Uh, uh, follow that there are follow up questions yeah in the, the in the discrete setting makes makes sense yes thank you all right thank you let's uh, so let's thank Matteo one more time thank you very much again thank you and um